So I just finished reviewing Jim Carrey's 90s heyday, all the movies from the point his career exploded, so I didn't talk about Once Bitten. Shame. So it's time to rank all those movies that changed Hollywood at the time and made Jim Carrey one of the biggest stars on the planet. And this list won't include Batman Forever because I don't view it as a Jim Carrey movie, he's just in it, even though he steals the show. It's going to be hard to rank all these since I love Jim Carrey and I love all his movies, but it's got to be done. Let me know your ranking in the comments below and please subscribe if you enjoy this video. Number 8 on this ranking is Ace Ventura When Nature Calls. Now I do like the film, I do really really find it funny but I do feel like it's a bit of a show off session for Jim Carrey. I don't feel it has the heart of the first Ace Ventura and I feel like at this point Jim Carrey was literally riding a wave of comedy where he thought he could do no wrong. So he just, he didn't even, even want to do this sequel, so I feel like he just threw everything at Ace and just made this movie a bit too over the top. There's certain moments in this movie where you just, you watch it and you're like, wow, Ace is a dick. Ace isn't as earnest as he was in the first film, and the script isn't as good as the first film. It's just a movie that doesn't really hold together that well. I still laugh a lot at it, there's many hilarious scenes, but if I had to rank one last, it would be Ace Ventura and H. Cools. Can you believe it? Next is The Cable Guy. Now I do think this is a very effective movie. I do really like it again. But it's slightly flawed and I feel like one of the main flaws is the Matthew Broderick character. He just makes a few baffling decisions in the film and it's also not the greatest performance by Matthew Broderick and I feel bad saying that since it's Ferris Bueller. Sorry Ferris. The movie does shift a bit too much between dark and light. I like how ambitious it is and how it just gave Jim Carrey this creepy edge, this twisted turn, and it was extremely uh, brave for Jim Carrey to do this. So, you know, while it is flawed, I respect the ambition of the film. I love all the pop culture references in it. And you sympathise with Jim Carrey's character in it. Even when he's doing the bad things, he still manages to make you sympathise with him. So it's a movie that pretty much works, but it's just not as good as many of the others on this list and it does now and again not hold together perfectly well in certain elements of the script. And The Cable Guy does have one of Jim Carrey's funniest and most silliest moments ever put to film. Can I have your skin? Sure. Check this out. <laughs> Silence of the land. Hello, Clarice. It's good to see you again. <laughs> Priceless. Next is Liar Liar. Just outside the top five. I do really, really like Liar Liar. I feel like it has this kind of charm to it that a lot of Robin Williams movies had in the 90s. I feel like he was kind of uh, going for that feeling. It's got this sentimental edge to it. It's a sweet natured film. But it's also Jim Carrey's most physical performance ever like forget Ace Ventura forget the mask forget Dumb and Dumber this is the most physical performance and look no further than Jim Carrey beating the shit out of himself in the toilet this is just a bonkers scene I felt this movie influenced a lot of comedies to come and not many comedies have reached that level of Liar Liar which just has this incredible amount of slapstick, physical humour but also such a good heart to it, such a good message. There's so much here about the importance of telling the truth, the importance of raising your children right, the importance of being good to people. But you also have Chip Carey going insane and hijacking a, one of those carts at the airport and trying to hang on to a plane. I mean. This is almost like a Jim Carrey action film at times. I also think the film's really creative in the many ways that Jim Carrey gets embarrassed by telling the truth all day. I thought the movie's great, I think it's madcap, it's hilarious, it's got heart, it's fast paced, it's laugh a minute. It really is a highlight of Jim Carrey in the 90s. So we're in the top 5 and number 5 is Man on the Moon, Jim Carrey's tribute to Andy Kaufman, his real life comedian idol. Now this is a movie that, that almost a story behind it is remembered as much as the movie. Maybe even more than the movie. The movie kind of went under the radar a little bit. 
I think it's an excellent film, I really, really do. I feel like director Milos Foreman really captures the time period of the 70s and 80s. He really chooses what he shows from Andy's career well. It's a very compact and fast-paced film. I feel like Jim Carrey completely hauntingly captures Andy Kaufman. Of course he did, because he was going around on set claiming to be possessed by Andy Kaufman. Bananas. And I feel like the documentary Jim and Andy, which shows all that stuff, kind of, I feel like people were taking, well, there's lots of people who have seen Jim and Andy, but they haven't seen Man on the Moon. That's kind of overshadowing the actual, the actual film. I feel like people need to watch the actual film because it is a great biopic. And it's got a lot of uh, credible things that will open your eyes about comedy, about people who are being influenced today by this man you may never have heard of. Number four is The Mask, one of the most fun movies ever. This movie is a definition of fun. I love the madcap cartoony style. I love how they literally wrote the character to be more cartoony for Jim Carrey. Obviously the source material is very very dark and there's dark points in this film like when the mask pulls out a machine gun and just starts to try and lay waste to a bunch of gangsters. That dark enough for you? I feel like this is a great moment for early CGI too. The CGI is pretty darn good in the film. Even though Jim Carrey's absolutely bonkers as the mask, he's also quite grounded in this because the mask's sole ego, Stanley Ipkiss, is a laid back, a down to earth guy. So, you know, we don't get Jim and Gary going too over the top because he's able to go back to that likeable, believable, regular guy, and that gives this movie a grounded edge too. This is one of those films that is ingrained in your mind. The images from it literally. I look back at my childhood and the mask is part of the images, it's just incredible. I watched this film so many times and it's just permanently in there, it really really is. And it's just one of those characters I was constantly mimicking, constantly running around quoting and to this day we all still quote the mask, it is a 90s classic. Number three is Ace Ventura Pet Detective, Jim Carrey's greatest ever character. Even though I'm not putting it out as his best film, this is his greatest character. It's a fantastic creation. You know, Ace Ventura was morphed out of Jim Carrey's stand-up routine and also um, obviously him sitting down with the writers. But it came a lot from what Jim Carrey had been doing on the stand-up circuit for years. This is another character who we still quote to this day. The mannerisms are unforgettable. There really hasn't been another character like Ace Ventura since. I love the story of Ace going to rescue the mascot of the Miami Dolphins football team. I enjoyed that snapshot into American football. I'm not interested in American football, but I remember as, as a kid, and even today, I am fascinated by that little look behind the curtain out of that world. I find that really intriguing and a really, really good plot. Of course, you have Courtney Cox in an early role, and she keeps Jim Carrey somewhat grounded in this film. Courtney Cox doesn't like to talk about this film. Get over it, love. You were in Ace Ventura. It's a great movie. Ace is more earnest, believable and likeable in this than the sequel. He's still doing all the crazy stuff, the mannerisms and going around annoying people, but it's kind of harnessed. The script is so good, it gives Ace something to do. Jim Carrey shows off, but it makes sense. It's not just him riding a wave all the way through. There's stuff that can ground him, there's interesting jokes. And this is a moment in time movie, it really is. Ace Ventura is one of the defining films of the 90s, I think, and it completely and utterly turned Jim Carrey into a megastar. Alrighty then. Number two is Dumb and Dumber. Why is it so high? Because it's one of the greatest movies about friendship. Now nah, screw it. It's the greatest movie about friendship I've ever seen. I can put on Dumb and Dumber whenever I'm feeling down and it will always lift my mood. Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, their double act in this, is only rivaled for enjoyment for me by Bill and Ted. I mean, it's just, they're so much fun to watch. They just lift your spirits. And I love the underdog escapist storyline in this film. I love the road trip plot of these two halfwits uh, traveling across the country. It's just got this really nice, joyous, sweet tone to it. And even though it has got some gross out humor, I feel like it works. This was the time period when gross out humor was just coming into popularity like jackass and all that so it does work it might not have worked if you release it today but i still find it absolutely hilarious watching this i know lots of people just view it as a really really just dumb movie and it is but it does have a heart to it it has a uh, nice story of friendship it has some smart moments it's not just gross out 
ridiculousness. Funniest moment in the film for me, it's got to be Jim Carrey's dream sequence. What can I say? Dumb and Dumb is one of the funniest movies ever made, but it's a bit more than that too. If you look hard enough, you might find some actual sense in Dumb and Dumber. No way! That's great! We landed on the moon! Number one, it had to be The Truman Show. This is Jim Carrey's best performance for me and his best movie of the 90s. And it's one of the most important movies for Jim Carrey because it kind of propelled him into being considered a top tier actor before The Majestic kind of ended that. I like it. This movie is fascinating, captivating, haunting and incredibly well made by director Peter Weir. The story of a man on TV 24 hours a day unaware, Peter Weir really does take us into that world of how haunting this is that it's going on and how it would be possible all the different ways they try and manipulate his life his relationship his goals everything and it's just fascinating to see with today's reality tv how it is how this kind of stuff was just at the beginning of of us getting obsessed with seeing everyone's life 24 hours a day the movie does so well in making us sympathize with truman in the parameters of the truman show but also in wanting him to escape the Truman Show. I still remember watching that ending scene in the cinema, the soundtrack, the direction of Truman trying to escape the island in a boat. I was just absolutely chilled to the bone watching that scene and it still blows me away to this day. It's one of the greatest movie combinations of the 90s. It's incredibly epic. An incredible supporting cast, Laura Linney, Noah Emmerich, and Ed Harris, the creator of the show, Kristoff, who makes this fake world so intriguing to watch. Truman's show is just incredibly ambitious and it will be one of those movies that's looked back on as changing everything. It, it really, it's a monumental movie and Jim Carrey steps into Oscar contender acting with this performance. I think he should have got an Academy Award. I think it's incredible. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening and good night. Yeah. There you have it, that's my ranking. Are you a fan of Jim Carrey's 90s movies? How would you rank these films? Let me know in the comments. Check out my Jim Carrey reviews playlist and my other rankings and don't forget to subscribe if you're an 80s or 90s kid for more nostalgic movie talk. See you next time.